So this time we will cover a new set of asanas, which is upside down asanas. So if you see uh, your AC uh, external duct where it is throwing water, if it is choked, what people do is push water from opposite direction. There are two ways. One is hitting, creating vibration. We are creating vibration to all our uh, whole pipeline by Omkar, by doing Brahmari and all that. Another thing is doing a forceful uh, pushing. So in drainage also you do that forceful pushing so that the pipes are clean. Which happens when you exert yourself, when you do Kapalbhati kind of things. Another thing is reversing. So reversing is very important because you are treating the whole thing in head to leg, same direction. So there are two asanas, which is Sarvangasana and Shirshasana. Shirshasana is standing on your head. Problem with Shirshasana is, Shirshasana has to be done with a proper control and uh, someone has to observe, they have to know whether you have a problem with uh, your veins and if they are swollen. In some cases, it can cause a serious damage. But Sarvangasana is among the safest because Sarvangasana automatically your neck gets locked, your Jarandirband is applied. So you can uh, do it safely unless you have severe neck problems. So we'll do it after Brahm Brahmari will cover that uh, before the final Omkar. And Sarvangasana should be done every day. It's definitely one of the best asanas. Sarvangasana also is useful for all thyroid problems. So let's start with our Omkar. Exhale completely. Darkness, pure existence. feeling of me and me alone. I hear distinct gunjan like an echo of my own hair from the corners of the universe. Mm. This I hear with my mind. That is why it is called Manas Mukar. A light gets lamp, lamp gets lighted, center of my chest, flooding the whole temple of my body. You need to clearly imagine the light reaching your ears, top of the head, cheek, throat. Belly, hands, fingers, legs, toes, the whole temple that is my body is flooded with this divine light. I take my focus a few kilometers away from where. This source of light looks like a star, single point source, and vast darkness around. All focus on this single source of light. I get pulled automatically to the source. 
as I move closer, I see the picture becoming clearer and bigger. This temple, divine structure in Padmasana posture becomes size of my palm and till the point where it is exactly my side. Can someone please mute all? As if there is a magical virtual mirror in between, I see a exact replica of me in Padmasan. But extremely calm expression. Completely satisfied smile. I feel like checking out the hood. Stability and calmness. So I take a round with my focus. From side, right side, back side, left. From wherever I see. There is absolute stability, no moment, completely self-satisfied. And again in front. And now I need to find more, so the focus moves closer. As the focus moves closer, this starts looking, becoming gigantic, like a huge mountain. As I go closer and closer, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, till I merge. And now it is divine light everywhere, infinite light, no darkness. I realize this calm, peaceful expression that I was appreciating was nothing but me. The divinity was me in this temple. Me without my anxieties, anger, other issues and connections. The purest form of me was the divine in the temple. I am the light. So nothing but this divine light and the divine sound of Omkar. I am alone. Pure existence, consciousness, knowledge, and infinite, pure, anand, bliss, Happiness. Except. We are skipping Kapalvati.
will take anurum below three times. By now, if you are really practicing, your anulom virum will be without friction. This is excessive friction I'm showing, but so that you can hear, but test will very smooth. As I have given, actually you can try this example that take uh, oil, some kind of oil in glass and pour it slowly in a pot. And you'll see no turbulence, no sound. It's very soft, smooth movement. Your breathing has to become like that. So it shouldn't be. That is what we do in Kapalbhati. It has to be. Just align it with my hand movement. Okay. So we are starting with left nostril, right closed. Left closed with right exhale. With right exhale. We repeat two more times. Unless you concentrate, you don't even feel that you are breathing. It has to be so. In the end of the Kriya, you need to exhale completely. Stay there. Your body now needs oxygen. You breathe in and very slowly exhale. You need to train your mind. You need to train your breathing so that you coordinate the two things and get peace and happiness for your mind. Flow of breath. The flow of water in the river, dharana that we do, are directly, we are associating with our mind. So we do Uddiyanband. I hope you remember, Uddiyanband starts with Muladhar is applied. You completely breathe out, Jagantarband is applied. Then you apply Uddiyan Band by pressing your hands on knees, pull back your stomach as much as possible. Without breathing with Jalandar Band on a few seconds, then release your Uddiyan Band, stomach has to be relaxed. Then pick up your chin, which is Jalandar Band is resolved, and then you breathe. Okay, so let's do it once. So the power of Uddiyan Band pulling inside is so much that if you are not applying Mulbandh, then a gas can be pulled inside. Water can be pulled inside. People can do that when you are for internal cleansing, natural basti. People can do this by sitting in the river, doing Uddiyan Band, pulling in water and, and cleansing your uh, intestines. Now Brahmari. 
So, as I told you, there are three ways of cleansing dirt in a pipeline system. One is forcing it. Is one way of forcing. Then for your arteries and so when you do jogging, running, when your uh, heartbeat increases, you are again cleansing your blood capillaries and the arteries and veins. And then when you do this hum, a strong hum, you are doing the vibration effect. So while doing Brahmari, you focus on heart. You can also focus on your brain. So people who are worried about neuro problems or do not want to get neuro problems in future, this Omkar also helps in helping you not get Parkinson's kind of disease in future. And also uh, doing while Brahmari, like chest, you can focus on brain, but here we'll do the conventional primary. We'll focus on heart. We'll do it five times. By the fifth time, your heart feels happy. It's a lotus with eight petals, becomes fresh. You need to feel happiness here, right in your heart. Okay, so ears, above eyebrows, below eyes, neck bent down, My heart is feeling happy, so so excited and happy. Straighten your neck, move fingers around eyes, and then the ears. Now this hum. Now I don't see how you are doing, but if you are doing it lightly, like mm, the sound is here only. It has to be here and it has to be powerful enough so that it tries to cause the vibration. Mm. For it to be effective. Now, when you are doing that and you are closing your ears and when you are applying Jalandarban, like you are bent down, the whole vibration is trapped here and the vibration becomes much stronger. Okay, now we will come to Sarvangasana. Someone asked that why not Shirshasana? So as I told you, Shirshasana does not protect excessive pressure to your uh, capillaries in brain and can cause damage if you are not of a particular health. So Sarvangasana is something you lie on the back and this is something you can do every day near the end of your yoga session. So my legs may, I have no assistance, so my legs may give the screen, but you can imagine. So you have lifted your leg. So going back is Halasan. Okay, in that position you support your waist, straighten your legs. Now your toes are right in front of your eyes, same level. If you feel dizzy, you should stop. So do it 5, 10, 15. About 20 seconds is what? With practice, you should target. Go back to Halasan. Slowly come down. This should not be done. Jerkily. Take down then slowly. This reminds me that I told you about the exercise to lose belly fat with friction. 
that is with resistance. You are pulling your hands on your navel position and breathing deep, belly breathing. Throat pressure is applied. So this is one of the fastest ways of burning belly fat. Slowly get up. These things if practiced can give you miraculous results. Uh, feel free to give your feedbacks that whether you have been able to practice and what were your experiences, any benefits, any problems, any issues you are facing. Someone asked me about kidney stone and I told him that this reversal of position is one of the ways to solve it. So people had asked me about hypothyroid and hyperthyroid. That is having high and low. And what are the solutions? Interestingly and miraculously for both Sarvangasana works to correct it. So let's do the final Unkar and that time, this time you will do your own dharana in between and in the end we'll take the river. Exit. Count. Take care that you consciously realize you are being alone. And first explain why alone. You think that why there are so many people with me, friends, family, your spouse, your kids and Aren't they with me? Aren't, isn't that God, the temple is with me? All these are temporary associations. So you look at a river and you see that there are two planks which are going together, hand in hand. They're moving together, two of the wooden planks are moving together and you think they're bound to each other because 10 minutes you're watching, they're just going together. There's no relative motion. But after 10 minutes, they separate and one goes in one direction, another in another direction. And you realize, oh, it looked like it was together, but that was a temporary association. Similarly, if you look at your infinite lifespan of millions and trillions of lives, because there is no start, no end. You have been there in existence since so long. This current associations with people and things and temples and uh, kids and whoever. This association is temporary compared to this whole infinite past and future of yours. So this is not to leave your responsibility towards anyone with you, but this is to understand that this is a very small part of your life. You really need to understand. Uh, you know, a kid is playing some small game in his school. And if he thinks that is his full life, and he's ready to die for that, that small game. You'll tell him that, no, better don't do this, because this is not the whole life. Your life is much bigger, and this is just a small part, a temporary enjoyment. Exactly that is what I'm trying to do, that, that let you know that there is much more to our life than this one single lifespan. And if you understand that, then your focuses and priorities will change. So anyway, you need to... Uh, Realize that aloneness 
you need to see the darkness, light, the focus, merging, the peace, understand the divinity that you were in this whole divine temple. And then remaining to Okas. And you, in the meanwhile, you are hearing this Gunjan of Manas Omkar. Divine light all around you. You are the divine light. I am alone. Pure consciousness. Knowledge. Infinite happiness. Bliss. Exit. I feel water moving around. Smooth, calm, moving water. I am submerged till my nose, just below eyes. At times the water is touching my ear lobes. The sky in front of me begins to lighten up. Clouds, their edges, some rays flowing through the clouds. Reddish golden edges to the clouds. As there is light, I see that I am in middle of a vast river, slowly flowing towards east. The water is so calm, I see reflection of the clouds. On the banks, both sides, there are trees, shrubs, bigger trees with spread branches. A particular branch attracts my attention. It is bent so low, so the branch is gone. It has dipped down and then come up. And the lowest portion is so close to water that a simple touch to the water, the ripple, and it will touch the branch. Or slightest of the breeze and the branch will cause ripples. These are like our sensitive points, touch points where slightest disturbance and you get impacted. I see reflection of this branch also, very clear. Sun is just coming up making the scene more beautiful, the reflection, everything. I am fully engrossed in the reflection rather than the original picture. A reflection does justice only when the mind, the water is completely calm. A disturbed mind gives you a disturbed picture of reality. While I am enjoying this, a drop of water falls just in front of me, causing circular ripples. 
now the reflection is not vivid. But I still get engrossed in the pattern. There are so many attractions, you get engrossed and get trapped. Though they are not really helpful. But due to the patterns, I keep looking at it. And another drop, and another. And it starts raining. Now there are bigger waves. Reflection is moving and unclear. With this complete instability, I find it difficult to focus, difficult to balance. Difficulty in balancing causes fear of flowing with the water, fear of getting banged somewhere, losing life, anxiety. I desperately want to become stable now. When we face problems in life, that is the time we actually look for stability. And stability never is in the reflection, it is in the original, seeing things as they are. So I take my focus away to the actual sun, trees, clouds, which are stable. Luckily, sun doesn't move when there is a breeze or a heavy breeze. I'm being able to balance myself. Sun is coming up and so does the water level. And I get completely submerged. Again, I lose a picture of a stable source. Flow of water is dangerously fast now. Is it a helpless situation? Is there anything stable that I can look forward to? And I close my eyes. Go deep within. And I still see that divine light within. Now for me, neither the water, nor the flow, nor the sun, nothing exists. Full focus, it's infinite, divine light, pure bliss, pure knowledge. And my undestructible, indestructible existence. As I stabilize mentally, the river water also calms down, level comes down. My head is above water. The sun is fully visible. All the reflections are perfect. But I have realized the temporariness of this pleasant scenario. And I now know, whenever required, where to go back. Back inside, within. To seek this divine self in this temporary temple of the body. I look back inside. Pure existence, pure knowledge, consciousness, and infinite and pure bliss. Uh, relax. Exit.
And it is important for me to get a feedback that this dharana, this meditation exercise, is it fast? Is it too slow? Whether you are being able to focus, whether you are being able to focus while I am taking it or when you are doing it by yourself. So that we can adjust and correct it. I will come back to the most important discussion we did last time. It was a puzzle thrown at you. A person jumps from 10th floor saying that what is going to happen is going to happen. How can it be that what is not going to happen can happen? I mean, obviously what is going to happen is going to happen. Jumps and dies. And my question was that because he was to die, he jumped. Or because he jumped, he died. Now, people have tried to give answers, but I would like people to have deeper thinking. First of all, question this thing, you know, that is it really that there is fate? Are we bound by something? That could be nonsense. Or isn't it purely based on what I do and what I get? But we do not see that. Because though it's a small probability, a person jumps from 10th floor, there is a possibility that a truck full of cotton is going and he falls there. So there is no guarantee that what is going to happen. So, to understand whether there is fixed future or not, let us understand what is knowledge. So today, let's say you know 100 things. You know, let's say Hindi, English, Bengali, some languages. You know some subjects, like someone may know physics, mechanical engineering, and cooking, and taste of a few uh, food items. So many things you have learned today, right? You know today. Tomorrow, what are you going to learn? You may be learning French language, or you may be learning programming, or you may be learning geology, or gynecology, or psychology, or millions of things that are possible that are... How are you going to do that? You may open a book, read the book, get the knowledge. From where did the knowledge come? You say from the book? Did the book have knowledge? I don't think so. Book was a combination of dots, black and white, or some colored dots. I interpreted something out of that and I got the knowledge. So the book was just an apparent cause, but the knowledge, from, so from where did, the knowledge was not property of book, where did the knowledge come from? So most of the deeper philosophies from our continent, they believe that soul already had that knowledge. The life already had that knowledge. It just got uncovered by doing that effort. So the theorist tries to say, the hypothesis says that we in our purest stage have complete and infinite knowledge which is covered by layers which we call karmas. So tomorrow I may remove the layer on fridge or someday I may do it on the on Sudoku or someday I may do it on some history and I cover that part of knowledge. And there is limitation, so I, I keep covering by the time I learn something new, more dust gets formed there, so I forget some of the older knowledge. This keeps happening. But if I accept that purest form, I have, a soul has complete knowledge, what it means is complete knowledge of past, present and future. If someone knows future completely, that means it is fixed. What can be done? Someone knows that something is going to happen. And if that is the truth, then it has to happen. Then doesn't it make you feel that you are bound by that knowledge? So I would say no. You need to understand it this way. That if I switch a button, light will be lighted. Okay, a lamp will. I have a switch, tube light switch, and I. Push the button, tube light, fan, those things will start. Now, this I know. So, when someone presses the button, does the light get lighted because I know it? No. My knowledge is independent. I just know it. So, it is by its own physics, by the electricity, by because of his action of pressing the button that the light is going to be on. Me knowing this, has nothing to do with it. So me knowing is not a binding thing of that. It's an independent thing. So the people who have 
let's say, achieved the level of complete and infinite knowledge, may know it, but they are not the karta, not the responsible things for, they are not controlled. They are knowing because I am going to. So my activity also is important. Now, what? Is it 50-50? Is it 100%? Is it 100% that? So there are multiple levels of views. Uh, it is true. So someone had asked me that uh, if I know that in the future, if I'm going there, my hand is going to get cut. I will not go there. I'll change the future. You cannot. Uh, you get that level of complete knowledge only when you do not want to make any change. You do not want to, to save your hand or anything. You become completely neutral to everything. That is when there is a possibility that you have complete knowledge. So, so one may think that I am changing future, I am changing fate. I will give you an example. There is one pot, let's say, a clay pot with a small hole. Water is dripping. So my, I do a calculation that in 10 minutes, this is going to get emptied. So a boy comes, says, let me change the future. Instead of 10 minutes, after 5 minutes, he throws a stone, breaks the pot. And will say that, no, I have changed what was to be, what was going to happen, I have changed. So from his point of view, he has changed. From viewpoint of someone who knows everything, he would be knowing that this guy is going to calculate 10 minutes, this guy is going to come after 5 minutes and break the pot and it is going to happen in 5 minutes. So it depends on which level from where your focus point is. Now what happens is, do I know currently what is going to happen in future? No. So I cannot say what is going to happen is going to happen. First of all, as I said, someone who knows is not the karta of the things. If he knows, he may be knowing because I am going to work hard, study hard, and so I am going to get good marks. So I cannot stop using SWOT, the, the, the positive energy that I have to do. My thought will be for my future. I do, I will get it. By chance you have studied hard, but somehow there was a, a traffic problem, some accident, you could not reach the example. And you, you failed in spite of study. This is something you did not know and this has happened. Now, once it has happened, can you change it? It is pure knowledge for you. Once it has happened, the past is just like pure knowledge, which is a evolved being would have complete knowledge. Everything is knowledge. Everything is like past to them. This past that you have uh, gone through, what you would do is you will use the shield of saying that this was to happen. That is the time you know that this was to happen. I can't do anything now. Now, I take this line as my present line. Okay, for future, I am saying, if I do, it will happen. For past, this was to happen. So, it happened in so and so way. Both are true, right? So, for future, this is true. For past, that is true. But what would be true for the current line? Both are touching future and past. The limiting point. So, for my current thing, both are simultaneous truths. And I have to understand this as the fate and karma being effective and in action simultaneously, if I understand this, which is easily said than done, this is really difficult to, to kind of fathom or to understand um, clearly that how can there be multiple simultaneous truths. But as I said, it depends on the focus point. So from my current focus, it will have to be that I have to do efforts. I cannot sit saying that what has to happen is going to happen. Then the all knowledgeable beings would be knowing that this guy is going to be a foolish person who is going to say what is going to happen is going to happen, is not going to work and going to become unsuccessful. And going to know that someone is going to work hard and become successful, that is just a knowledge to them. You cannot, so you cannot avoid cause and effect. So unless a ball is thrown on ground, it is not going to bounce. Okay, so whatever someone knows, he knows because you do it. So there is no uh, no alternative to doing your own karma. So any questions? Because it's a difficult topic. Would be happy if people have a serious question.
any question on the nature of knowledge that knowledge was a property of self it did not come from book it did not come someone teaches you it's sound some sound waves sound waves your mind interprets converts into understanding and finally of knowledge mm -hmm. the light of that knowledge comes inside you the knowledge inside me is not the words not the text image not the sound but actual knowledge no questions this self uh, search yeah what inspires that basically when you start asking uh, who am i what is the purpose yeah, yeah. What, what i have come on this universe this yeah, basic question inspiration when leads you to that particular thing yeah. so what starts But, this quest basically right so there are people who are honest to themselves yes. there are there are who just get sold to the system so let's say you are born and you see that everybody is running and you also start running there are so many who even today on the road someone starts everyone starts running on the right direction you will also turn right and start running because you don't know what is there must be some reason everybody is just followed but a curious mind will try to know okay, what has happened why why are we running what is it that i want am i running in circles so when someone thinks that we start with assumption because everyone is telling you that food gives you happiness money gives you happiness different kinds of book give you happiness and a true honest mind starts thinking that but am i getting happiness where is that peace where is that stability whatever i do there is still that my thirst is not getting quenched that is where one starts doing analysis that what is it do i really want to find out is is this what i want to do do i want to keep running in circles just because others are doing should i just be running in circles or should i climb to a higher position find out the structure of this maze find out the solution and come out of this maze now this is something which a, a person who has some logic and who has honesty honesty is very important so honesty means not to others honesty to yourself you believe something is not right you should be able to take that path so if i believe that you know these things are not really happiness so when i thought that this may not be the right thing and i need to find truth and for four years i did not do any job now this requires courage and where does that courage come from because you are being honest to yourself you believe this is not right you want to find out what is right and you take a path which on an average statistically people think that this is not the right path and you have this confidence that that right and wrong is not decided by numbers if there is a question given in exam and 49 out of 50 people give a wrong answer and one person gives right answer do these votes count and the wrong becomes right it does not so i as a honest person would want to know what is the real solution do i really have to keep becoming running temporarily satisfying myself i go to a doctor and every time he gives me a painkiller by evening i am better again night the pain starts again i have to take painkiller after a few days i think am i being cured or i am being fooled into being giving a sense of cure because as soon as the effect of medicine is gone my body is not perfect it is again giving me this pain exactly same thing happens the quest starts that that i really want to get free of this pain and not temporarily suppress the pain i i am not sure whether this answers the question you can ask me more people uh, say that one should have a goal one should have a goal ultimate goal so ultimate goal of human life basically that particular concept is not taught in our school colleges so how one uh, Uh, yeah so gets one, inspired one by, it by yourself if it was taught in colleges it would have been great that what do you want so this there are there are videos of indian western philosophers also where these questions are asked so what do you want to do i want to 
do a startup and do this and that. Okay, so startup given, that startup is there, but you will not get any money. No, 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 I want to do that startup so that I can get million dollars. Okay, great, you get million dollars, but you can't spend them. No, 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 my aim is not, I want to buy a few things. So buying few things was your aim. Getting money was not your aim. Okay, so cross that out. Then he asked that, okay, you buy those things, but you just keep them, you don't use them. No, no, I want to enjoy them. So you want to enjoy. Why do you want to enjoy? Because I want to be happy. Undoubtedly, I will tell you, finally, you just go on digging with this question and answer. You will come to the same answer that every living being wants to be happy. That is the first goal, undoubtedly. So there was a child musician, singer, and she had written on her WhatsApp. Of course, the child. So what would a child know? That music is my life, life's ultimate goal. I said, no, is, that is not your ultimate goal. First of all, I asked her that, do you want to get good music but become an absolutely dirty, crooked person? So no. So being a good human being is a higher goal than this? Yes. And don't you want to be happy finally? You get this and you have diseases and you have pain and you have all problems and you have family issues and a lot of clashes at home. No, you don't want that. So first aim is you want to become happy. So that happiness course, I am I'm told that Delhi government has introduced a happiness course in their schools, in uh, government schools. And kids are so happy, they say that this course is required for our parents. Okay, something like that is actually required. It, it is needed to be taught. People debate that should this dharma be taught and that religion be taught. And No, first... The definition, by definition of dharma, dharma is property. It's property. What is what is dharma of gold? That particular color. What is dharma of sweet thing? That sweetness. What is dharma of self? That that you need to understand that consciousness, permanence, happiness is my dharma. So yeah, your suggestion that this is not taught in school. If it was taught, it was nice. But if it is not taught, there will be scientific minds like us who will start thinking and try to find out on their own. It is very important not to get locked with some cult, some guru, something and get stuck. You should have this inquisitiveness and readiness to find truth. You should keep that alive. Yeah. Anything else? This happiness uh, can be of body, it can be of senses, it can be of mind, it can be of no, intellect. No. No, so no, which no, is the no, best no. Uh, no, happiness? No. no. What is happiness of body? It is not happiness. What you are, abhas, the, the virtual feeling of happiness or you thinking something is happiness is not happiness. Somebody had to ask me that is, it, is this experience of self similar to the highest, tastiest food that you eat or the greatest experience of sex? Or is it 10 times, 100 times more of that experience? Nothing to do with that. That experience is, it is, it is like, like I say, rose has a nice fragrance is a word and getting that fragrance. That word and this actual experience has no relation. They're a million times different. So, so uh, you feel hunger and you eat something and you quench the hunger. You feel good. It's exactly same as you have pain and you take painkiller. So some kind of trouble that you have quenched and you feel good about it is not actually happiness. Like the example in jail. And instead of 10 lashes, the boy gets 5 lashes. And instead of half roti, he gets 1 roti. He is still hungry. But he feels better than the earlier position. And you start calling it happiness. So something which is perceived as happiness and something which is happiness as a property and you are experiencing it actually as happiness are two different things. So, uh, happiness of mind, happiness of body, the Osho kind of theories are actually to, mm. to mislead you. So, that is, that is quenching a need. You, you cannot call that as a you would say that some nerves, some current that passes from your tongue to your brain and it gives that signal and you, you like that 
and you say, oh, I like it. This can be simulated also without actually getting a sweet food. You can get that sweet experience. Experiments are done. You can check on YouTube also. So, so you call that happiness, some current passing to your brain and then you know, your brain feels better, which is going to, the brain cells are also going to die someday and these current giving cells are also, also going to die someday. Is that happiness or a true satisfaction, true fearless? That is why I said that doing any kind of meditation, you may get some kind of calm, joy, peace. But your fears will still be there. Your stability, your greed, your anger, nothing will get sorted unless you actually realize who you are and experience the object that has happiness as its property, your own pure self. Yeah. So one question. Yeah. Sir, but don't you think that it is uh, necessary for a human being to go through the grind uh, or go through the uh, difficulties or go through what he is meant to do in life, so th so that ultimately he realizes that it is not that my true happiness no, does not, not lie duty. here. You don't have choice. You have to go through it. So that, that you can't help it. No, no it's, we're built with that limitation. So you you are born with that pain of hunger, and you need to quench it. You you can't solve that. While doing that, and you, you are doing it, and you can keep doing it. So. So, the person has been taking aeropathy and then he goes to Ayurveda, to yoga, to homeopath and says, I, I need to find a permanent solution. I am just saying that you need to also find permanent solution. I am not saying that when in pain, do not take painkiller. You may have to take painkiller sometimes. So, you can go through this, you can have that temporary goals, temporary ambitions and all that. While doing all this running around, this side has to be opened that, okay, I want to also have stability. So someone jumps jobs, this job, that job, then he has insecurity, then again look for another job. Won't that person be thinking that I need financial freedom? You would have heard uh, this word in the practical world. One needs to have come out of rat race, have nice investments so that whatever happens, you are financially free. Similarly, this happiness freedom, the spiritual freedom also you should be striving for. But then you get a feeling that this striving is a waste of time, isn't it? Because when ultimate freedom is not mm. in, in that particular path, then why should you waste your time doing all these things? Correct. Correct. So, but it is not so easy. Once you realize, and, and it's not just logic that is going to help. So, I'll, I'll tell you a story. I, mean. I don't know. I should be telling this to the other batch also, Hindi batch. But there was a saint and he was telling people that food, there is no happiness, and sex, there is no happiness, and this, that, you, you should give up all this. I thought, and he was telling some stories, so I made up a story. And I said that, uh, okay, there was a, hmm, uh, there were two gyanis in one village, both knew same books, everything by heart, but they had different style of teaching. And people always debated whether we should learn from A or B. So one great saint came to that village and everybody was there. People were saying, whom should we learn from? So he said, no, you should learn from that Pandit number two, B, the second Gyani. So the first guy said, tell me what I know that he uh, don't know that he knows. Ask me any question. Why, why should someone learn from B? There was a beggar who had come there. This was a real time story I had made there. So a bigger word comes there and he says that I uh, help me, oh guru. So that saint says that yeah, let's do the experiment. You go to A and B and try to get help. So that's the experiment. So the beggar goes to A and says that uh, give me something. So this first gyani comes in with his knowledge. He says that your food is stale. You should not eat it. There are so many types of bacteria, 75 types of diseases can happen. He gets convinced he doesn't eat that. Second day, third day, same thing. And he says, hey, this, this way I'm going to die. This doesn't help. Let me go to B. So he goes to the second knowledgeable person. The guy tells him that this food is not right, but he gives him some nice food, fresh food. 
He likes that food. Every day he starts coming there. He says, oh, why are you coming here every day? No, I like that food. And he said, but uh, then you are, why are you eating that stale food then? He said, no, but what you are giving is little amount. I need more food. So can I get this food full time? He says, yes, for that you will have to work. And then the beggar can start thinking that, no, this food is so nice, I need to work. This is the process, just telling you this is not right. So the, the part you said, that knowledge that this is waste. Okay, just understanding is not enough. Once you start getting a test of real happiness, then automatically you don't have to leave this. Automatically your focus will go to real happiness compared to these other things. So, so I don't tell you that your food is bad. I'm trying to give you a, a additional food. You test it, you find it better, you find it Tastier, you find it cleaner, healthier. Obviously, we'll go for that food. So, this is not a decision consciously made. In your path, when you actually encounter a better happiness, better life, then naturally, that is why I have strong objection to that word tyag, that I have done tyag of this thing. Tyag of what? What was not joy, you are believing it, is not tyag. You basically realize it was not joy you found something better. So you are doing a hug of something better and so you are neglecting food and other things. And so people, onlookers can think that, okay, this saint has done tyag of everything. Okay, so the idea is that, yes, it is true. It's, is it possible for everyone? No. But if you realize something is a better path, then yes, you should go for a true happiness, not, not keep running after a fictitious one. Uh, so, sir, if this concept is introduced uh, to the kids in an early age, say in schools or colleges or whatever, isn't it also possible that they also might start thinking in those lines earlier than, say, people like us? And then they may become a little complacent uh, towards following other goals of life. Isn't there a no, possibility? No, that won't happen for a simple reason that everybody has different capacity. But this basic understanding will reduce frustrations will reduce crime, that, that they will not go to the level. I think you had asked me this question that uh, uh, if to my 16-year-old, what do I tell him? That don't yeah, have any ambition. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I had told you that that he, he may still have his ambition, but he will not go to the level that he will produce a drug which, will, which kills 100,000 people and makes him richer. Because he will know that the, parallelly, he will know what is reality and this is not everything in life. So, so the sense of achievement, whatever you want, you want, it's a natural tendency of human being to to excel in whatever they are. So here also, I I feel good if I find a new way, new story, new example. I feel nice about it. If people appreciate it, I'm not going to dislike it. Correct. So 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 though you have understood reality, you have not completely been detached, and that ability to detach is going to be so much varying among people. That some people, in spite of knowing everything, will be completely dipped in uh, material happiness. But at least having this knowledge will reduce their... Yeah, but teaching people that, oh, God is there, he is going to take care. That is fooling people and keeping them in darkness. That is something that is going to do damage. Telling truth can never be damaging. Does everyone who understands? So, so there are so many people who know. My, I, have, I met a friend. He had some serious health issues, and he said, "Yeah, I want to come out of it." And he's still smoking. So, in spite of knowing, doesn't he know that smoking is bad? Not everyone will be able to control. But at least everyone should know that smoking is bad. Should we stop teaching people that smoking is bad? No, we should teach them the truth and reality. So in schools, if it is introduced, a pure spiritual science, like a science, not, not like a bhakti or ritual or blind following or, or a cause for hate, cause for separating A from A group from B group. If it is not done, if it is done as a pure science, just like we do space, time, matter. Similarly, uh, consciousness matter as an additional matter if it is taught and its property and and what is satisfaction what is happiness I think people will be happier and more successful.
so despite having the knowledge if every person is uh, not able to implement it at the same level uh, what is the basis for that does, does that does that uh, depend on their vasanas or their accumulated past karmas or uh... accumulation definitely has impact and second thing is nothing like actual experience so so those real thirsty ones who actually search for water and try to drink it so once that experience comes then your journey really starts faster because your search is over now so you have been wandering in forest and many times you have been feeling thirsty once you have found that where the source of water is then you can still wander in the forest get tired sweat out but you know whenever you want you can go back to that water source so so it will actually help and uh, yeah uh, it will be varying degrees i know people who after having a good theoretical knowledge have been sub the west like like every every single wise that they had but since that understanding was there over time they saw futility of those vices and i have seen that person becoming a saint also these are actual people i know so vices means drugs and uh, flesh and whatever i mean every everything that you can think of yeah anything else anyone okay so there's nothing then we need with omkar and the whole summary of this course is to be able to find that permanent independent happiness which we should be able to get in, in any kind of situation just go inside and exit Thank you, guys.